Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to see how to create a make table query. That's where you can make a query that makes a table that you could then make other queries that could make other tables and so on. Now, it's basically taking data from some data source, whether it's a, a table or another query, and then using that to create a new table. That's a make table query. Today's question comes from Brandon in Springfield, Illinois, one of my Platinum members. Brandon says, how can I set up a combo box to make sure users pick state abbreviations instead of typing out full state names, like using FL instead of Florida? Also, what's the best way to sort through and clean up the existing list we have without entering everything by hand? I get this a lot. You got a list of stuff, whether it's states or products or even customers. And you want to make that table properly relational. So instead of typing in stuff freehand, the user has to pick from the list that you provide because that list of states could be in a separate table. Now, unfortunately, the cleanup is usually the worst part of this, taking existing data that you have and cleaning it up so it's, it's in good shape to be in its own table. So let's take a look at what we have to do to accomplish this. First of all, I consider this an expert level video. What is expert? Well, expert is sandwiched between beginner and developer. So it's, it's beyond the basics. You should have a good solid understanding of the, the core functionality of Microsoft Access, but it's not quite developer. We don't need any programming to do this. So that's why I call it expert stuff. That's what I teach in my expert lessons. Now, make table is just one type of the different action queries. There's update, append, delete, and the make table. So you can modify data in a table or even create a new table using a query. Now we are going to use an update query to clean up this list before we make the table. So go watch my update queries video if you have not yet watched it already. And to get a unique list of states in the table, we're going to use an aggregate query. So go watch this one too. These are free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch those, then come on back. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can download off my website if you want to. Now in here, I got a customer table and state is in here and it's just free form text. And I've typed all these in pretty good, you know, pretty well, but you're gonna get people doing this. You're gonna get people doing this, right? If you allow them to freely enter in this stuff. So you wanna limit it. Now you could put a, you know, a, a validation rule on here to limit it to two characters. There's lots of stuff you can do, but the best way to do this is to put the state data in its own state table, right? So they have to pick from your list. If you want to add to it, you can, you know, have them give them ways to edit the state table. But how do we take this stuff and put that in a table without having to retype them all, right? Because we got, let's say, I only have 33 customers here. What if I had 33,000 customers in here? That's a pain in the butt. So the first thing you have to do is clean up this list. Now, the, unfortunately, there's no super simple way to do this without using an update query. Now, what I usually do is I usually sort the list A to Z, all right, and then I'll take a look at which ones don't match up. Now, if you got just one, that's no big deal to come in here and do that, right? If you've got 500 people, that typed in N period, Y period, well, for that, you can make yourself a little update query to change all of that, right? And that just involves, let's save changes, that just involves a little update query, right? So query design, we're gonna turn this into an update query. I'm gonna bring in the customer table. I'm looking for the state field. The criteria is gonna be New York like that. And I gotta put, of course, my quotes around it, right? And I'm going to update it to NY so it looks like that. Okay. And I missed my little dot there. Okay. And then when I run this query, all right, nothing appears to happen. But now if I go back to my customer table, I should notice that that's been fixed. All right. So unfortunately, you're going to have to do that once for every one that you want to correct. Or you can make yourself a correction table, right? A table that's got the the bad spelling for it and the good spelling for it. So if you guys wanna see a video on how to do that, let me know. In fact, in fact, I have something like that that I use in my database to fix countries because I like to keep a uniform list of countries. You'd be surprised how many people type their own country wrong. Guys in Australia, I don't know, how, that's probably the number one country where people spell Australia wrong is people who live in Australia. <laughs> But no, but seriously, you get uh, you get regional spellings. You get people that, that call their country something else 
or like Turkey, they spell it differently than we spell it in the United States. So I have a video on that I'm going to be putting together. So you could do the same thing with states. If you got common, commonly mistyped states, right? But once you go through and clean up this list using the method that I just showed you, and you got a nice clean list in here, now we can take this data and put it into its own table. And that's where today's topic comes in, a make table query. So let's close all this. We don't have to save that. All right. Now, in order to do this, we need a unique list of all of the states in the customer table. To get a unique list, we're going to create an aggregate query. So create query design. Bring in the customer table. Hit the totals button. This makes it an aggregate query. Now we can bring in state. Sort it if you want to, right? And you can see now it says group by. And if you run it, there's your unique list. You should only see each state in here one time. This is another great way to go just go down the list and make sure that you don't have any outliers in here. Someone you, you, you might have missed somebody putting in, you know, MIN instead of Minnesota. Right? And if you want to get rid of null values in the criteria, put in is not null, just like that. And now if you run it, you'll see there's no null values there. All right, this is good. Let's save this as my state ag q my state aggregate query, all right? Now we can use this guy to fill another query to make that table. So create query design. This time we're gonna pick make table query. Now what's the new table name gonna be? Well, let's make it state T, all right? In the current database. Now what's gonna fill it? Well, data from that state aggregate query. Bring that guy in here. This is the data source. All right, we can close this. I almost never use this guy. I pretty much always pull stuff from here. Okay, bring in the state. Now, if you want to save this, you can. If you think you're going to be doing this on a regular basis, right, if you get a, you know, maybe you get a list from somebody else or you import data from some website or whatever, if you're going to be doing this, so you could save this as your state make table query or whatever you want to call it, make TQ or whatever. All right. And now when I run this, all right, look at that, it created a table, state T. Let's close this guy and open this guy up. And look at that, there's your list of states. A unique list of states all on a table, right? The only thing that's left to do that I strongly recommend, I think every table should have an ID field. So state ID, that's my auto number. You can add it to a table if it doesn't already have one. And I just like to keep these guys up top. That's just a style of preference of, of mine. I like to have the auto number, the primary key at the top of each table. Save it, make it a primary key. Sometimes if you have an existing table and you save it, if you don't already, uh, if it's a new table, access usually asks you, right? Do you wanna make a primary key? If, if you have an existing table and you add the field, it doesn't always, so click the key button, make sure you got your little key there. Okay, all right, save it, take a peek at what we got, and there's our data. And now what's left is to convert this in the customer table to this. How do you do that? Well, that's just one more update query, right? So I'm gonna to go to the customer table, design view. Now for the state, let's insert right in here, insert a row, let's put state ID in here. That'll be a number, because that's the foreign key, right? Remember our relationships. If you don't remember primary and former, and uh, I can't talk today. If you don't remember your relationships with your primary key and your foreign key, go watch my relationships video. I'll put a link down below for that. So this is a one to many relationship, right? Save it. All right, now in here, there's no data in that state ID field. It's all null, so now we gotta fill it in. We gotta say if it's Florida, make it X, or if it's New York, make it Y. Whatever values in that state ID field has to go into here. So how do we do that? Well, we gotta match things up. This is another update query. So create query design. I'm gonna bring in, I always close this thing. I, I'm gonna bring in my customer table and my state table. Now, Access is gonna try to join it based on that ID. It sees a primary key field here, an auto number and a number over there, and it thinks that's the relationship that you want, but it's not, not at this point. So delete that relationship. What we need to do is link them together by state first. Then we're gonna fill in that ID. So grab state over here, drag it and drop it over here onto that state box. Now we've said that, okay, this state here is the same as that state there, see? So if you open up, let's put in here just to see customer, this state and that state. And if you run it, you'll see how it matches them all up. Okay, all right, get rid of these, we don't need them. 
Now, we're gonna turn this into an update query. I'm gonna say what I wanna do is set this value equal to that value. So it takes the ID from the state table for all the records that match by state and fills it in over here. So we're gonna change this to an update query. Okay, bring down this state ID. Okay, and we're gonna match it to this state ID over here. But we have to call it by its full name. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna say update to state T dot state ID. Okay, it knows that this one is from customer T because it's right there in the table reference. Okay, now run it. Nothing appears to happen. I have my warnings turned off, by the way. Normally you'd see, oh, the access is about to update 33 rows or whatever. You could just hit okay. Uh, I have a whole separate video where I teach you how to turn those off. I think I teach you in the update query video. But now let's go ahead and save this. We'll call this the state update queue. And again, you won't have to run this anymore unless you you know, import data or get it from another source. Now, if you go into your customer table and look, look at that. You've got all matching IDs for those states. All right, double check. Florida should be one. New York should be 13. Let's take a peek. Florida is one, yep, New York is 13. All right, so that worked. So now we can come in here, we can delete state from our customer table. Back up your database first, folks, just in case. I've made changes like this and then realize, ooh, I goofed. So make sure you make a backup first. Okay, now you don't have a state text field in here anymore, so now you gotta go to your forms, wherever you got the form, you're gonna get pound name errors, and now you can make a combo box right there and you can do it with the combo box wizard and i got a whole separate video on making relational combo boxes i'll put a link down below but you come up here you find a combo box you drop it right there you say i want to get the values from a table or query your list of state values to pick from is in the state t next bring over both fields because you need that id that's what we're actually storing right next Sort that list by state. Next. That's what it's going to look like. Shrink it up if you want. Next. Now, we're going to store that value in what field? We picked a state, but we actually really picked a state ID. So we're going to save that value in the state ID field in the customer table. Next. What label would you like for it? We're going to delete the label anyways. Hit finish. And there's that label. Get rid of it. Slide this guy up into place like so. There we go. Make that zip field a little bit smaller, maybe. There's that. Update your tab. Well, before you update the tab order, change the name of the box, right? Open it up. And instead of combo 30, let's call it state combo. That's on my list of peeve, pet peeves to the access team, right? The wizard should ask you for a name instead of just a label. I'm sick of all these combo 30s in my database. All right, tab order, find your state combo, put it where it belongs, right after city, hit okay, save it, close it, close it, close it, open it, there you go. And now you've got a properly relational state field. Okay, eh? pretty easy to do, right? Yeah, there's a bunch of steps, but sometimes scrubbing data in a database that you built, especially if you built it when you were a beginner, and lots of people do this, they they learn a few things, they take you know some access beginner classes, and they're, oh, I got tons of great ideas how to build my database, and you build it a certain way, and that's fine, you build it how a beginner builds it, but then when you get into more advanced stuff, you learn relationships, and oh, wait, that should be in a table, but now you gotta go back and fix all the old data that you had in there, and that's okay, you can, you can do it with some action queries. Trust me, I, I've been doing this for 30 years, and the stuff that I learned even five years ago, I'm now going, wait a minute, I could have done it this way. Instead, you, you, will, you will constantly be tweaking your database. I'm, I think of it like the mechanic who's constantly tweaking his car, right? <laughs> now, if you want to learn more about this stuff, I've got five whole classes on advanced queries. We got update queries, more update queries, append queries, delete queries, using macros to run these queries if you don't want to get into VBA programming, union queries, make table queries, all kinds of stuff. Cross tab queries, which are kind of like pivot tables in Excel. This is my 
action queries, my advanced queries series, my, my query series. <laughs> Check it out. I'll put links down below. And also, I've got a similar video on normalizing data. What does that mean? Well, let's say you pull in a table that came from a spreadsheet in Microsoft Excel. And in that spreadsheet, you've got both customers and orders, right? Well, as we know from our relationships, our tables should have only one type of stuff. Your customer table should not also include order data. So normalizing it is splitting those apart into a customer table and an order table. And how do you match those up? That's what this video covers. Very similar to what we just did, but instead of a single field in a table, this one makes two tables out of incoming data from another table. So check this out if you wanna learn more. But that's it, there you go. That's make table queries in a nutshell. There's so much more you could do with them. I, I've got like five different examples of things we could do with make table queries. But uh, that's gonna do it for today. If you wanna learn more about make table queries, check out those videos I gave you before or post some comments down below if you have any questions, things you wanna see. But I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.